Welcome to Toastmaster Time, the show that got everybody talking. I'm your host, Adrian Jefferson Chofor, and I'm delighted to be here for this edition of Toastmaster Time. Just like in a Toastmasters meeting, we will have prepared speeches, and then we'll have evaluators to give speeches feedback to help them to improve. And tonight, we have our own evaluator, Cynthia Stott. Cynthia, welcome to Toastmasters Time. Cynthia, what do we have to look forward to in this edition of Toastmaster Time? Thank you, Adrian. I'm so happy to be here. And we have two amazing speakers from Heart to Heart Toastmasters. Actually, they're both PhDs, both doctors. So very excited to hear them speak up with their empowering speeches because they really focus on empowering leaders to be ready to move forward and uh, take action in their lives. And so they're going to be also speaking on the new Pathways program, which is new to District 57, was the first to launch it. So we're excited to see them speak, and I'm excited to evaluate them. Back to you, Adrienne. This sounds like quite a show, Cynthia. Two doctors, and they're here with us today to give us amazing speeches. Looking forward to it. So now I have the pleasure to introduce our first guest, Michelle Petacolas, Dr. Michelle Petacolas. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Adrian. It's my pleasure. As mentioned, you are a doctor. What's your background? I have a background in sociology, and currently I'm working as a grief and loss coach. Wow, that's fascinating. How has Toastmasters helped you? Well, the way in which I make myself apparent to the, my clients and, and uh, attract them is through speaking. I do a lot of speaking. Imagine. And, and Toastmasters really helps to up my game. It has so many ways of really fine-tuning the speech, and I found it to be very helpful in that regard. Well, it sounds fascinating. We're happy to have you with us, and we're looking forward to hearing your speech. So I'm going to give you some time to prepare and set up. And in the meantime, I'm going to explain to our viewers what it means to have a Pathways speech. A Pathways speech is crafted from one of the 10 unique learning paths in the Pathways program. Each path is divided into five levels that build in complexity. At the weekly club meetings, we also encourage members to act as evaluators to provide feedback on how well each speaker is doing and if have they achieved their goals or not. And here at Toastmaster Time, we're no different. So we're welcoming back our own evaluator, Cynthia. Cynthia, I'm going to ask you, what are you looking for in Michelle's speech in this edition of Toastmaster Time? Great. Well, this is project number two, mm -hmm. speech number one. And so it's a basic. We're going to look at many of the different areas that we look at in Toastmasters eye contact. In this case, the audience is our viewers at home. And also, we're going to look at gestures and vocal variety, as well as how it's organized and um, how they opened and how they closed. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback. You're such an experienced evaluator. So let's give our attention now to uh, our speaker, Dr. Michelle Petercolis. She's going to speak on being brilliant, being brilliant Dr. Michelle Petacolis. Thought leader Marianne Williamson says that our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Is that your fear? Are you afraid of being truly who you are? Do you struggle with overwhelm and stress? Are you plagued by self-doubt? Are you a people pleaser? Would you like to know three secrets to banish your fear and step into your power? Yes? 
great. I'm Dr. Michelle Petacolis. I am an inner game expert, and I help women leaders and change makers to step into their power through facing their fear. And I have found in the 20 years of helping them through life changes that at the core, at the root of their issues, are early childhood wounds and traumas that keep them small. Now, there are three secrets, and they all begin with the letter B. The first one is brilliance. This is our gift. This is what we came into the world to do. It's our power, our passion, our purpose. But oftentimes, it gets tamped down when we're little children, which brings us to B number two, body. The body wants to keep us safe. And when we come into this world as little children, we are so vulnerable, so small, so dependent. And when we, when we are frightened, when we don't get the nourishment and support that we need, it triggers a survival response of fight, flee, and freeze. Sometimes for human beings, that isn't enough. Which brings us to the third B, which is brain, the cerebral cortex, which comes up with ideas and beliefs and behavior that help to keep the body safe. But sometimes as adults, it also tends to keep us small and holds us back. So I would like to share a little bit of my own story so you understand how this works. So I came into the world brilliant, a seed ready to burst forth. But I came into a family in which there were two other children. So I didn't bond with my mother. I bonded with my father. And he was in the military. And at the age of two, my age of two, he was transferred to Japan. And I was devastated. And I decided that I had to take things into my own hands. And I became a people pleaser so that I would make sure that I got what I needed. Now, this worked really well through in my family and through school, National Honor Society, Phi Beta Kappa, one of two graduate students to get my PhD. But then I got into my first job. I was so excited, but I found out that my students, they needed me to lead, and all I knew how to do was please. And so I tamped myself down because I lost that job, and I only took jobs where people wanted me more than I needed them. And then my husband left me, and I tamped myself down further, and I joined a spiritual community where relationships weren't, didn't matter. The only relationship that mattered was with the divine. Fortunately, this spiritual practice reconnected me to my brilliance. And so brilliance and body became combined. And by the time my current husband showed up, my heart was opened and I was ready for love. However, brain was not on board, and I started to see the patterns, and I started to see the difficulties that were going to hold me back. So I actually did some very early childhood healing. And that's what brought me into the work that I do, which is to help other women to combine their body, their brilliance, and their brain. So I want to give you three tips to help you to combine those three things. And they are A, B, and C. The first one is awe. We connect with our brilliance through awe, through connecting to spirit, meditating, going out in nature. And B, we connect to our body and calm our body through breath. If you deep breathe, Breathe deeply, you actually calm the body. And finally, C, curiosity. We use our brains with curiosity and notice what patterns and behaviors are holding us back. 
and then C, we start to change them. So when you bring brilliance and body and brain together, you are able to step into your power and be brilliant. So, Cynthia, what did you think of Michelle's powerful speech? Well, it was powerful. Oh, yes, indeed. I think she hit all the points. I loved how she combined, you used the rule of three. She actually used them twice. She used the three Bs, That's and then right. she used A, B, C for how to implement and them. And the three Fs. And the three Fs. <laughs> <laughs> Freeze, flee, or fight. <laughs> it was exactly. just amazing, and also how she explained how unresolved childhood trauma and hurt manifest itself in adulthood Absolutely. and how one can still heal from that pain and hurt and move forward and step into their brilliance. I loved how she said from birth we're born with brilliance and we can reclaim it. Absolutely. Powerful. Absolutely. What else did you like about her speech? I loved her connection with the audience. I really felt her heart was open and, and you could see that with her gestures, her yes. open armed gestures. I loved how she used the stage. She moved point one, point two, point three. She moved forward and back. She really did a 3D effect with the whole stage. It was brilliant. I loved that as well. The body movement was fantastic. Well, Cynthia, thank you for your valuable insight and I look forward to hearing your comments later on later on. But one more question I want to ask you about that speech. I'm not sure, have you heard it before? I know you're I in the same club. I have heard it before. We're in the same club and so um, she actually just finished her CC manual, the old com 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 competent communicator manual Only CC? last week. Yes. Wow, <laughs> she's amazing. How but she's only been with us since, since uh, March. Only? Yes. With us less, since March. Less than a year. Yeah. Well, she's on the fast track, I tell you. Cynthia. Yeah. And she's stretching. And I'd love to share a stretch goal. Would you like to hear a stretch yes, goal? Yes, please. What I would love to see is the gestures. Mm -hmm. When we point, we, we make people feel that we're attacking them. So yes. you, you can use your hand open to you. She could use that. And then one of the great stretch goals is that she's going to be adding some more statistics into her speech when she gives it a couple speeches down the line through pathways. And there's all sorts of different ways that she can layer it with some great statistics to make it even deeper for us. Fantastic. Well, thanks again, Cynthia. I really appreciate your feedback and also discussing that stretch goal. Right now, we have to take a quick break. This is Toastmasters time, and we'll be right back. Name an effective political leader in history who couldn't speak well. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. There aren't any. Because when it comes to a disease Freedom like requires that, leadership, no and leadership requires parties. oratory. You have to speak to be heard. I have a dream. It's all about personal growth and guts. Never give in. Never, never, never. Welcome back to Toastmaster Time. I'm happy to present our second guest, Dr. Michio Ambrosius. Michio Ambrosius, how are you? Hi, glad to be here. Good. Thank you. Good to have you with yes. us. Toastmasters, can you tell me, when did you decide to join? Well, actually, a long time ago, but I'm not a, a long-term member okay. because English is my second language, and I tiptoed into Toastmasters and waited my toe and then jumped back. <laughs> and I did that a couple of times. So altogether, even though I was, um, when I started out was at 1980s, wow. so maybe 89 or something like that. But actual length of being a member is like three years. 
Well, you had a long journey as a Toastmaster, although you had a few breaks along the way. Oh, yeah. So there's something true. about Toastmasters that keeps bringing you back or reeling you in. Oh, yes. So how has it helped you? Well, really helped me to improve my communication skills. Mm. And, of course, it is very important for me to communicate well with my client. I'm a clinical psychologist and do psychotherapy. Yeah, and important. to communicate very well and understand them are uh, very important activities. And I'm sure Toastmasters is helping, especially with the filler words. Even as a native speaker, we have issues with that too, but your English is fantastic. And we look Thank forward to hearing your speech today. So I'm going to let you prepare your speech and organize yourself. Yes. And in the meantime, what I'll do is share a little bit about the organization Toastmasters International. Toastmasters International, the goal is public speaking. It's done in a supportive atmosphere in our clubs, but more than that, it's fun. So all of our Toastmaster members have fun in our clubs as they hone their communication and leadership skills. And with that, I'd like to welcome back Cynthia. She is going to evaluate Michelle's speech Welcome back, Cynthia. What are we looking for in Michelle's speech today? Well, actually, they're both the same projects. Oh. Project number two, oh. speech number one in Pathways, but they're very different speeches. And so we'll probably have different feedback. We're looking again for eye contact, body movement, vocal variety, and especially a good organization of a speech, good open and close. Sounds good. I look forward to hearing your comments after Dr. Michelle's speech. And with that, I'd like to introduce our second speaker, Dr. Misha Ambrosius. Achieve the success you deserve. Achieve the success you deserve, Dr. Misha Ambrosius. Every 98 seconds, an American is sexually assaulted. That is only the reported cases. We psychologists estimate somewhere from one half to two third of female population experience some sort of sexual abuse sometime in their lives. Largest numbers are children. It's a shocking news. I'm Dr. Michio Ambrosius. I'm an international speaker and best-selling author. I have been a clinical psychologist for over 20 years. During my work, I have discovered that emotionally charged, painful experience gets stuck in the right side of the brain and do not move and do not get the benefit of left side brain functioning that is logical, rational thinking, problem solving, and decision making. Therefore, not having those good part of our brain intermingled with emotional part of the brain that is right, people get stuck in life. And I have developed a technique to solve that problem because I'm passionate about working with women leaders. I would like to support them to advance in life and reach for higher goals and break the, breath, break the glass ceiling and achieve the success that they deserve. For example, one of my clients is 38-year-old woman. Let's call her Mary. Mary came to me with horrendous amount of 
anxiety. So much anxiety that she could not even leave home, not even to go to the grocery store. And she couldn't remember anything that caused her to be in that condition. Only thing she remembered was when she was a child. Her grandmother got upset with her and threw away all of her dolls. That was painful experience. So based on that information, we worked with that and apply the technique. She felt lighter and went foam that afternoon. A week later, she came back and said to me, Dr. Michio, I have found, remembered something horrible. When I was 16, I was sexually abused. We have worked on the problem, and then she has recovered her energy. During the session, her body shook like this. While she released the energy and blocked feelings, blocked uh, information. Shortly after then, she started her own business and acquired international clients. And I'm happy to report to you that she's hugely successful businesswoman now. Therefore, it is important to work with this type of technique because talking therapy do not work. Deeply think in memories has to be stimulated and moved both right and left side of the brain. It's ready and available for, for you to take advantage of. But my question is, are you ready to step forward powerfully and achieve the success that you deserve. Thank you. Another powerful speech this, ev this evening. Dr. Ambrose's speech was mm. so, there's no words. I didn't even know how she was going to Link it yeah. from sexual abuse to achieving the success you deserve. Mm, very powerful, really powerful opening. Yes. I think shocking. I think the statistics, we talked about that a little earlier, that that's okay. something down the line that they're going in the Pathways program, they're going to get to stretch into those, those statistics. And by Dr. Michio bringing it in at the beginning mm -hmm. was very powerful. And it also set up her credibility. It was able, she was to go right into her credibility and why she knows those she statistics. Did that. She absolutely did. She used the stage beautifully. Yes. I thought her body language was amazing. I loved how she stepped forward when she's asking the audience to step forward into, into their own success. Right, and I actually felt like her client when she was, when she, those memories was conjured up and she had to let that go, that negative energy and the way she shook, you felt it. Absolutely. I, I call it that she went back into the story. She actually lived the story. So you yes. could feel her body shake as she was like observing her client. She became her client and then we could feel it too. We were really able to be transported directly into her story. We were, I know I felt and I'm sure you felt the same way too. Well, I have to tell you, it was such a delight to have you on the show today. The feedback that you gave was not only valuable, but something, it was so practical to all of our viewers just on how to deliver a master class speech like we heard today from both of our speakers. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank we you. We appreciate having you. And so we will be right back with Toastmaster Time. Name an effective political leader in history who couldn't speak well. 
Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. There aren't any. Because when it comes to a disease Freedom like requires that, leadership, no and leadership requires parties. oratory. You have to speak to be heard. I have a dream. It's all about personal growth and guts. Never give in. Never, never, never. Welcome back to Toastmaster Time. I'm your host, Adrian Jefferson Chofor, and I'm still here with our evaluator, Cynthia Stout. Cynthia Stott, welcome back. Uh, just a quick question mm -hmm. about your club. Mm -hmm. I know you're very proud of your club. You have seen it grow immensely. So tell us about your club, Heart to Heart. Mm. Well, it meets in Oakland. Okay. It's a specialty club, and we only meet once a month, oh, the okay. first Saturday of the month from 3.30 to 6.00. And we usually do have a headliner as well as a regular Toastmaster meeting. Then we go de deeper with the headliner that has a 20-minute speech, and we do five minutes of Q&A. It's a very, you would call it advanced, but we don't have any criteria for people coming in. So off, we have many of our members are entrepreneurs that, mm -hmm. that need to speak, both Dr. Micho and Dr. Um, Michelle. Uh, joined Toastmasters to make their speeches more impactful to their clients. Cynthia, I have to say, you have a club that's chock full of high caliber speakers, master class speakers. Mm. How did your club attract such experienced Toastmasters? Well, they are not actually very experienced Toastmasters. Really? They are experienced speakers. Um, but I have the reputation of being able to sell uh, ice cubes to Eskimos. And so I shared with them how important Toastmasters could be to their entrepreneurship and attracting their clients. Again, thank you so much, Cynthia. We loved having you here with us today. And that's going to be our time for this show. Thank you for joining us on Toastmaster Time. We tape our show in the San Francisco Bay Area. And if you'd like to know more information about the show, please visit us on toastmastertime.com and we're sponsored by District 57. And if you want to know more about uh, our district, please visit d57tm.org. And if you'd like to know more about Toastmasters International or find a club conveniently located near you, please visit toastmasters.org. And with that, we want to say, uh, show our appreciation to the wonderful staff and volunteers at the Media Center in Palo Alto, where we tape our show. I'd like to thank again our dynamic speakers. We had a wonderful show, Dr. Michelle Petercolas and Dr. Michio Ambrosius, and of course, our dynamic evaluator, Cynthia Stout. And with that, from us at Toastmaster Time, I'm your host, Adrian Jefferson Chofor. We invite you to join Toastmasters and keep talking. <laughs>